Yeah. See you guys. Yeah. See you guys. Hey everybody. We're just going to wait for everybody to join. So just bear with us for a um, minute or so. Talk among yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get a cup of tea, yeah. <laughs> yeah, got water. <laughs> or you can watch the numbers go up on participants. It's quite fun, actually. Oh, oh, oh I no, I don't think that. No, I'm sorry, guys, you can't do that. <laughs> we can. <laughs> yes, I can. Yeah. Actually. Oh. Okay, I've just lost my backdrop. <laughs> oh, well, my sunny paradise is gone. Um, so welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us um, here today live. And um, just introduce myself. I'm Matt. I am um, head of marketing and brand here at Experience Travel Group. I've worked here for 10 years and we're sort of really happy that we get to do this today and joined by um, Cedarberg and JLA. So, you know, there's been, um, you know, a really sort of difficult time the last eight months, but we're looking forward. And just today, this is our sort of travel forecast, and we're going to break it down into a few sections. So we're going to start off with the state of play in our destinations, and then we're going to look towards the future. We're going to get our crystal balls out, um, and then we're going to talk about sort of booking and traveling with confidence. And then we're just going to talk a little bit um, about what our companies have been up to in the last eight months or so. So if you can um, ask us any questions whilst we're going along, in your sort of Zoom window at the bottom, you'll see that there's a Q&A. So please just type any question as we're going through. And um, there's this really cool little thumbs up thing um, if you haven't used the webinar before and you can upvote any questions. So if there's anything that, you know, is like, yes, I want that question answered, then please just, you know, press that thumbs up and we will try our best at the end to answer as many questions as possible. And then we will follow up um, afterwards um, and we'll put any questions on the web page as well. And if you have to drop out, then we will have this video um, recorded and we're going to put it on YouTube and send it around afterwards. So that's the easy bit out of the way. So I guess let's just do our introductions. So first off, um, we've got Sam. So he is obviously from Experience Travel Group. He is um, co-founder, MD and my boss. <laughs> Give us <Hi>. a wave. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got Sarah, um, MD of Jenny Latin America. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and we've got Ginny from Cedarberg, Africa. Hello. Right, thanks guys. So let's kick off. I'm going to do the state of play and I feel like I'm getting the uh, Eurovision Song Contest results here. Um, but let's go over to Africa. So let's start with you, Ginny, and tell us about state of play right now in Africa, please. Well, we have a bit of good news, which is that a couple of weeks ago, we had the sense that we might possibly be able to send people to a country that was both on the corridor list and on the exemption list. So we have one destination out of our 13. We can now send people to the Seychelles, which is rather marvellous for yeah. those who are um, keen to go somewhere absolutely paradisical and idyllic. Um, there's a minimal um, sort of travel restriction on arrival. Obviously, you have to have a negative um, PCR test. And then sort of after about five days, um, you're tested again at the government's expense. And then thereafter, providing you're negative, you can carry on. Um, Seychelles is very much a, um, a, an island idyll, but it, it, it is also a, a island hopping, say, so unlike Maldives, uh, people tend to move around from um, island to island. So it actually makes perfect sense. It doesn't really disrupt your holiday if you if you were to stay in one place for five days, because that's what most people do anyway. And then they go on to another island or another couple of islands. So this could be very good news. Um, so that's, that's our one piece of uh, at, you know, where we can actually send people right now. 
in terms of what we've been up to, we've also been selling quite a lot for the future. For South Africa, we've had a bit of a lucky break there because of the Lions um, rugby tour, which yeah. is next July and August. So had a quite reasonable September. <laughs> Good. Great. Sarah, do you want to fill us in with um, Latin America? Uh, not not quite so uh, not quite so buoyant or so open at the moment. Um, basically, we, we offer everywhere from Latin America for us is everywhere from Mexico down to um, actually we also offer Antarctica, and and really all of our destinations at the moment, um, just about all of our destinations are out of bounds if one considers the um, the FCO advice or the FCDO as we, we must now call it. Um, <laughs> Uh, they're all on the, the, the travel advisory is, is not to go at the moment, um, with the exception of Cuba, which has made it onto the, to, to the list. However, to all intents and purposes, Cuba's borders are closed. Um, right. So uh, one door opens, another one closes. So, yeah. so we're not sending anybody anywhere at the moment. In fact, we haven't got anybody traveling and we haven't had anybody traveling since we got everybody back by the 31st of March. Yeah. And Sam, Asia, please. Well, Asia, in contrast, quite a few of the destinations are open as far as the FCO is concerned, but Asian countries at the moment are taking um, a, a very cautious approach to letting in Europeans um, and Americans for that matter. So um, very few of our destinations right now are open, um, the exception being the Maldives. Um, so if you want to get away to Asia um, before, before, the, before Christmas, I'd say uh, the Maldives is the best option. Oman is looking like they're they're planning to open soon. Um, so yeah, that's that's Asia. Everywhere else is is currently closed to to Europeans. Great. So what we're going to do is just to know afterwards, we're going to put a little summary on the web page and we'll send it round because I know it's quite a lot to take in. So you can just see those destinations if you haven't noted them down, um, and then. What we're going to do is just move on to the future and I know obviously this is really tricky and obviously everyone will be aware that the situation changes every single day um, but it would be great to have kind of just an idea of, of what your predictions are for the future really so again Ginny do you want to crack on with Africa and let us know? Um, well we have got probably I'd say the majority of our destinations which are all wildlife orientated so they're all the safari destinations in east africa uh, and southern africa um many of them most of them are open um to a limited number of, of uh, nationalities um so we could send people against fcdo advice we could send people to to kenya right now to namibia right now um again with negative pcr tests uh and 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 the, the the hospitality industry has really been gearing up um safari is inherently covid19 friendly in that it's all takes place out of doors and it's inherently socially distanced um big wide open spaces so everybody's ready but obviously there is this issue of about you know us being able to, to to get there but there are destinations which aren't yet open to britain so we're really watching with hope to see if south africa will um review the decision to not allow brits into south africa um, which would be quite a good message i think for the future for when we feel we we feel comfortable about traveling yeah. so my you know kenya namibia if you're so minded South Africa, maybe soon. Okay, great. Thank you. Sarah, do you want to tell us about your side again, please? Yeah, I mean, setting aside the, um, the UK government advice, um, about, over which we have no control, and um, I think we might come on to that maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit later on, whether they're going to change it, what might happen there. So I'm going to leave that to one side. Yeah. Um, but thinking about the various destinations in Latin America that we offer and how close or ready they might be to, 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 to welcome visitors again. It's interesting, I mean, some countries, their borders didn't close. So somewhere like Brazil, for example, never closed at all. Um, and um, uh, you, people have continued to travel um, uh, and, and one could go now. But yeah. um, obviously Brazil's had a well-publicized sort of experience of, of COVID and it's, it's, it's taken its own sort of rather Trumpian sort of route. 
Um, and I don't think it's somewhere that the, the, the FCO advice is going to change to, or, or customer appetite is, is, is going to be particularly high in the, in the, in the near future anyway. So setting that aside, uh, Cuba, I mentioned the, um, the FCO advice is that one can go. Um, the borders have been closed, but some of the charter flights, I think TUI announced recently that they'll be going in from uh, November, uh, flying into Varadero. It's not our sort of market at all, but that does um, lead us to, to, to believe that it may be that the, the Cuban government is, is looking at opening things up more widely. And if flights start going back into Havana, um, and it's possible to do a bit more touring, which we're in, we're in discussions about at the moment, that, that could be a destination which will come online for us. Um, and it's, we're coming into a good time of year to be, to be traveling to Cuba. Yeah. I don't think much is likely before late December um, and probably into, into sort of January, but, but um, that looks potentially possible. Um, at the other end of the continent, Argentina and Chile, which I mentioned because we're very much coming into season now, normally it'd be Patagonia season from sort of October onwards, October through to March. Um, both remain closed at the moment. Their borders are closed. Argentina in particular has had a very, um, very strict lockdown. You can't travel from one state to another at the moment. Um, that will be relaxed soon and Argentinians should be able to travel a little bit more within their own country. And I think once we get a little bit more domestic tourism traveling, floating through the system, I think that would be good for everybody. Um, so again, I don't think there'll be much opening up before the end of the year, but it's possible that there could be a sort of second half of the Patagonia season. Yeah. Um, can't make any guarantees or promises about when borders will open for, for international visitors. Um, direct flights with BA are scheduled to start again from, from November, but obviously they're just working on the basis of the information they've got at the moment. So, so possible from possibly late, late December through maybe January, January onwards. Yeah. Um, Uruguay would make a fantastic add-on because Uruguay has had a good COVID, if it's possible to have a good COVID. They have very, very low numbers. Um, that's been ignored, I think, by uh, the FCDO advice, but um, extremely low numbers and great for an Estancia add-on or, or a beach add-on if, if, if Argentina and Chile come online. Um, and there's a couple of destinations that we're watching quite closely, um, and I cluster them slightly because, um, so Ecuador and the Galapagos, and Costa Rica in Central America. And there's a certain similarity and both are now open. They've opened their borders. They've been working very, very hard on protocols and preparations. Um, they're both WTTC approved. Um, they've got the, 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 the travel stamp for the work that they've done. Um, both offer the sort of type of tourism where you can, you're largely outside, lots of sort of boutique properties. Uh, remote rural type locations. Um, if you look at somewhere like Ecuador and the, and the Galapagos particularly, it's always had very choreographed, managed approach to tourism. Lim numbers are limited. Um, you need, as you do in many places, a, a, a negative PCR test to, to, to enter. And in fact, if you're going to the Galapagos, you need to have another PCR test because you need to have had one within 72 hours. So effectively, they've created a sort of travel corridor. Um, so they're, they're ready, they're, they're ready to receive people. As I say, they've worked very hard at putting in place the right sort of measures to be able to look after people and, and, and masks and temperature checks and distancing. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed, those destinations are yeah. ones that we'll be able to offer in the not too distant future, one hopes. Great, thank you. And Sam, finally with Asia, please. So Asia, I saw I just saw a question about Japan. Um, I'm going to ignore Japan because uh, it's not one of the destinations. <laughs> we cover. So for today, Asia, Japan, Japan doesn't count as Asia, I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, but we we will get someone to answer that question for you for you afterwards. Um, so Asia, I'm again. I'm going to ignore the FCDO advice because the FCDO advice is for right now, very specifically right now. Um, you know, it will change over time, um, and. You know, it's it, you know, as as this task force set up um, to to change the testing um, on arrival protocols. Things things will change. So, ignore, putting FCDO advice totally to one side, um, the best next best destination I think will open um, is Oman. They're making all the noises about opening in November. Um, it's a really immersive, exciting destination. Naturally, socially distanced. Um, so I think um, Oman is a is a really interesting one for for travel um, soon. Then into sort of Southeast Asia, um, Cambodia are very keen to open. Um, they've they've started uh, a process of of opening in a limited way now. They're keen to open soon. Um, the the 
sort of downside, if I can call it that, with Cambodia is um, the there are no point-to-point -point flights, so they are t dependent on um, entry points such as Singapore or or Bangkok. Um, but they're they're very keen to open. I think they'll they'll welcome tourists with open arms. Um, we've got a, a guide, um, one of our best guides actually, and he he contacted me recently to say he was he was selling noodles and he was very keen um, to have tourists back to do what he does he does best. Um, Lao is in a similar situation. They're very keen to open, but very dependent on Thailand. Um, Thailand has opened to long stay tourists, but you do have to quarantine for a week and commit to staying two months. So realistically, that's a you know that's that's not a holiday opening. That's a way to to trial it. Um, all, you know, all Asian countries have you know, pretty much all have very low. Um, COVID rates or in, in Southeast Asia. So they're very cautious about opening to Europeans at the moment. Um, going over to the to the subcontinent, Sri Lanka are, uh, Sri Lanka's taking a cautious approach. So um, I should, it looks likely it'll be well into 2021, although they're going to open sooner than that um, in, a, in a limited way for people who want to stay for two weeks in just one hotel. Um, so I can't see the British market being very keen on that, but at least that will be a way to trial reopening. Um, and India is making noises about opening in, in early 2021. Um, of course, India's got terrible press over COVID, so whether the demand will be there, um, I'm not sure. But I, I would, the, you know, without being an expert on that side of things, um, the only thing I'd point to is, is the sheer size of India um, and treating it as one country is like treating Europe, Europe as one country and in population terms, um, you know, it is, it is a vast country to, to, state the, to state the bleeding obvious. Um, Indonesia, the last, the last country on our, on our sort of list, um, Bali was very, very keen to open. In fact, it was all about to. They worked out lots of protocols. Um, for keeping people safe and then that was uh, kiboshed by uh, by the central government in Jakarta um, so we're we're watching this space there um, but uh, Indian Indonesia might well follow a, a, an island by island uh, opening great thank you so yeah I just think everybody watching that was a lot to take in and obviously you will be able to play it back but again we're just going to put the summary on the um, website page just so you can read it really quickly and, and see our predictions so thank you very much for that so just before we move on and um, anyone else who's joined subsequently just please feel free to use the Q&A which is at the bottom and you can use the thumbs up to um, vote any questions and we'll try and do them at the end and I've never done this before so I'm going to you know bear with me but we're going to try and do a poll um, so I'm going to launch it and um, we're just going to see what happens. So um, there are sort of three questions that would be really useful if you guys could answer for us. Um, so I'll give you a minute or so. Um, I don't know. I don't think the panelists can see the question. Sorry. You can. Oh, you can. Good. We just yeah. can't vote. You no, can't vote. No, I've stopped. Uh, vote for I've Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I've stopped you from voting. Uh. Um, <laughs> So hopefully you guys can can do it. I, I've got a, I've got a clock ticking, so I'll give you a bit longer. Um, oh yeah, it's we're off. We've got people voting, so let's see how we get on. This is like live data coming in, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> And then I'll I'll end the poll any minute, and then you guys should be able to see the answers. I've just Matt, I've just seen a question about Vietnam, which I overlooked mentioning. So yes, go on then um, while people are voting. Vietnam, looking, they're taking a very cautious approach. They did from the very beginning, um, very very cautious approach. The last we've heard is that they're planning to open for Phu Quoc Island, um, which is a large island in the south um, only. I, I can't see that being, you know, aimed at the British market because um, I don't think you'd go to Vietnam just to go to Phu Quoc Island. Um, but that will be a way to to trial reopening, um, and then we'll we'll see um, whether they open in 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 early 2021 or or, or perhaps um, towards April May. Yep. Thank you. Okay, we've nearly got, it's nearly slowed down. So I'm going to have to end it in 10 seconds. So you've got 10 seconds to quickly do it if you haven't already. Okay. Right, I'm going to end it and see what happens. So I'm going to press share. 
and hopefully you guys can all see it. So where do you feel most comfortable? So we've got short haul and then we've got mid haul and long haul. So actually quite interesting there from everybody. Um, Asia, <laughs> Asia won out on the uh, most comfortable, which is interesting, but probably a self-selecting audience there. 13% were a big fat no. Um, and um, the biggest concern about traveling, getting trapped in the destination and all of the above was pretty high as well not far from that so actually that's what we're going to be talking about now in section three so um i will stop sharing that and we can crack on so um yeah we're just going to move on to a bit about booking and traveling with confidence so i think should we start with the fco and and um would one of you like to volunteer and just talk about that side of things please um <laughs> yeah i think uh, uh, we're waiting for news really aren't we i mean yeah. um we are i think there's uh, we're, we're, in, we're in totally sort of new territory with regard to sort of what what the fco advice is is, is used for um i think it was understandable uh, you know back in back in march there was a real concern that people were going to get trapped overseas and that, see that was one of the big concerns so so putting in this blanket ban on traveling may, may seem to make a lot of sense um but in terms of where we are now it, it, it feels a little bit like it's creaking around the around the edges um the there's a travel task force has been set up and um, is supposed to report back very recently actually it's supposed to report back to 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 grant to to the, to the prime minister um, by the beginning of November. This is all about trying to get travel moving again. Um, we're not quite sure what, what they're going to conclude, conclude or what even what the remit is. Um, I've heard suggestions it's all about you know, trying to kind of reduce the amount of time in quarantine. Um, now, whether that would lead them then to, to, to look again at the, the blanket FCO advice, um, yeah. rather than just using that as, 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 as the sort of tool by which they keep people largely not traveling. Um, travel corridors was 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 the, was the idea in the summer, wasn't it? But but that yeah. quite quickly became unwieldy. And the, the thing about the FCO advice, and particularly if it's been used to monitor kind of COVID levels in other countries, as, as people have pointed out, um, the COVID levels in this country are significantly higher than they are in so many yeah, know, destinations yeah, yeah. overseas, to which the FCO doesn't say you know it continues to advise against travel. So it's hard to see that it's justified on the basis of there being higher COVID rates in those, in those countries. Um, they would normally claim it, 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 it's about that plus uh, an understanding of how good the healthcare systems are, et cetera, et cetera. But I think the Foreign Commonwealth Office has always found it tricky to keep you know, really on top of the nuanced granular information coming out and to try to do that to every country around the yeah. world uh, with something, uh, these pandemic sort of circumstances is, is, is very tricky. So um i would like to think that this, we're going to get a more nuanced approach um because yeah. i think that's that that's what's required because there's a real danger that that that, that trust in, in in the fco advice will be will be somewhat undermined if, if if it's not forthcoming i think yeah and that i think that leads on to travel insurance so sam you sort of said that you would volunteer and just tell us a little bit about <laughs> what's happening from that side of things travel insurance has become completely entwined with FCDO advice. Um, inadvertently, it was never intended to be so. Um, and the problem is that if FCDO advise against travel to a destination, uh, most travel policies um, are invalidated. Um, it doesn't really make sense. Um, as, as Sarah mentioned, um, you know, you, surely you're in, in much more danger of, of catching COVID than uh, in, in the UK than you are in, in many other countries. So it doesn't entirely make sense, um, but that's, that's the situation we're in. Uh, there are insurance policies now that have, have jumped in to, to fill that gap. Um, so there's plenty of policies now that are offering cover um, if you were unable to travel for ca from contracting COVID, um, um, in including our insurance partners, Global. Um, so there are policies for that. Um, and then Battled Face uh, have stepped into the breach to offer a very comprehensive policy um, for anyone who wants to travel against FCDO advice. 
um, and a, a comprehensive policy in many ways. The only restriction there, unfortunately, is they don't travel, they don't cover people over 59 anyway. Um, so if you're over, people over 59 are quite restricted. Um, there are policies out there, but um, you know, there's, there's ups and downs on most of them. So if, if you need any specific advice, we're, we're happy to give it to you personally. Um, but that's, that's the, the best general advice I've got. I think we've all sort of, um, in terms of adapted in, in our companies, haven't we? And, and come up with new booking policies and, and traveling with confidence. So I don't know, Ginny, if you That's want to. Almost, it's almost um, picking up the, the, the gap that is left by yeah. insurance in that we're effectively having to, I mean, well, clearly we can't replace the, 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 the medical and emergency evacuation part but, but that is so even if you were buying a policy now when one of our destinations was still not exempt from the fcdo advice providing it's it's for travel say sometime in 2021 when we might reasonably expect um or even later on in in 2020 when we might reasonably expect that um the the uh, the, the blanket ban was lifted the, the, the COVID medical cover would still be in place. You don't have to wait to book the holiday for the destination to be off the list. Yeah. But setting that aside, um, we are kind of picking up the slack by trying to offer as much flexibility in some instances. I, I've just sent someone to, to Kenya and the basis was that they did put down uh, no deposit they paid their balance in full just at 30 days before travel, by which point we'd then had about sort of 10 weeks before, um, once the borders were open before the time of travel. Um, and it looked okay at 30 days, but that trip was fully refundable up until 24 hours before travel, yeah. if there should be a COVID reason. So that's the kind of current sort of dream yeah. ticket in terms of making it possible for people to travel yeah. if they can get the insurance yeah. and they're so minded yeah but it, it's not always possible like it, i mentioned the lions rugby tour we we can't do it around that um yeah. but we try to find a kind of happy medium because often people are they are prepared um and i don't know our audience may be or may not we should have done a poll on this <laughs> they are kind of prepared to to share some of the risk yes. with us. It's yeah. the cancellation and curtailment yes. that is the big financial risk. Yeah. You know, you, you can't go. It's not one of the reasons that, that would be covered by the package travel regulations. Yes. I, we wouldn't be obliged to, to, to refund. We'd probably try and do something. Of course, I should, I should imagine all of us would try to do something. But, you know, there, there are scenarios that won't be covered by insurance and, and, and probably wouldn't be covered by us because our, you know, it, it, they're, they're so specific to an individual. Um, and and that, that people are willing to take a certain amount of risk around that. Yeah it's a question of maybe trying to work something out for the future where we, we, where we all manage an acceptable level of risk. Yes. Do you, do you want to add anything to that, Sarah, just from your side and what you guys have been doing? Yeah. I mean, I think um, flexibility is, uh, is, 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 is a key word. We've been using it. Uh, I, I want to spend a lot of time on, on webinars like this, talking to, to partners and suppliers in, in Latin America and, um, um, I'm sure we all, we all do the same with our destinations and um, just having to get across this idea that we need to be more flexible. I mean, the thing about planning travel and particularly long haul specialist travel of the kind that we offer is uh, often people are planning it a long time in advance. Um, uh, nine months, 12 months is, is, is not uncommon. So I was thinking, you know, it, it, this is actually not a bad time at all to be thinking ahead and to be making travel plans. I know people don't necessarily sit, feel the, the immediate Mm. need to but actually in many ways it's a great time to be doing it from from our point of view you can speak to specialist consultants and they've got plenty of time to be able to sort of you know talk, talk through the options options with people um in terms of, and you're able to put people who are booking and some people are are able to lock in you know the most flexible terms i think i've ever sort of seen because yeah. everybody is being as accommodating as they possibly can be i think we all recognize we don't know what quite what's going to happen um so i 
I, I don't think there's much reason to put off planning be, if you really want to plan because of, of feeling that you're tied into something. I think most of us are offer, of, offering the kind of terms which allow people to sort of back out if yeah. they're not able to travel up to a certain point. I mean, it, yes. it's unusual to be able to do it right until, un, un, until the 11th hour. But, but at the moment, we have a flexible policy, which, which means that we, we don't have to make a decision until, until about 45 days before. And that's when we're saying, we'll, we'll make a final decision. We'll know, and we wouldn't send somebody somewhere we didn't think that we were able, going to be able to offer a safe holiday and an enjoyable holiday. Um, yeah. so, so it sort of pushes the final decision into the future, but it allows people to be able to plan, lock in, lock in good terms, lock in good rates, um, spend time talking to people about the sorts of things they've always wanted to be able to do, um, and, and, and to be able to sort of plan, as I say, because most people aren't going to be traveling until for, for another sort of six, six, nine, 12 months yeah. in, in any event. Long, long-term planning is quite common in our bit of, our, our yeah, 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 yeah. Sam, do you want to add anything to that, just um, in terms of... Yeah, so I mean, very much, it's, it's more of the same, really. We, we want people to be able to book holidays, something to look forward to, something to, you know, to enjoy doing. People enjoy the planning. Um, and as Sarah says, at long-haul trips often book six, six months to a year um, in advance anyway. So it's all about making that possible. So we've negotiated with our suppliers. Um, we've got a concept called Travel Ready, um, and we're not asking for, you know, full deposits until a, a country is travel ready, which means, you know, we've assessed it as safe um, and it's open um, to, to UK travellers and um, it's ready to go. Um, and until then, we've, you know, we're doing a hundred pound deposit and even that is completely fully refundable um, should you not be able to take the trip. So it's, it's about de-risking um, that planning um, and in, and enjoyment. And I, I, I didn't mention Bhutan earlier, but Bhutan have done something interesting and in they've just announced their opening in October 2021. Um, and that seems like a long way away. But in my mind, that's actually a really sensible thing they've done. They've just they've said, look, we're 2020-21 season. Um, the, the Bhutan season runs from December through to end of April um, is, is finished. You know, we're, we're not going to we're not going to open for that season. Um, but we are going to do everything possible to open in 2021. So we're getting all our protocols in place to make sure that we protect the population. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to get all the, the, the travel set up and we're going to give some certainty to the industry in Bhutan. Um, so they know how to plan. You know, it's, it's not great, but they can plan through to 2021. And for people, you know, usually book Bhutan, it's very much a once in a lifetime destination. You, you tend to book it 11, 12 months in advance. In fact, you have to, um, because it's impossible to get the availability. So I'd, I'd say it's a really amazing opportunity um, to book Bhutan well in advance with, with limited risk. Great. Thank you. So is there anything else you guys would like to add just from that sort of section of um, booking traveling with confidence? I, I think we've covered some of the big hitters, hopefully. Just, um, I, just to say that, that this, is, this is possibly a, 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 a unique opportunity to, to get something which is very much sought after, which is private vehicles when you're on safari. Yeah. Um, so in Kenya, for example, um, most of the camps and lodges are offering private vehicles because they can, um, because there are lower numbers. Um, that's all part of the, the, the protocols. Um, so people probably have about the most um, exclusive experience at the moment. Um, not so much in, in um, say, in in other destinations but Zambia is also open and and, and uh, another interesting little thing that I didn't mention before um, is that it is possible to get to South Africa if you have traveled to a what what they are deeming to be a safe destination beforehand so you have to stay there for 10 days and then from then you can get on into South Africa I should have mentioned that before um, so so there are <sighs> There are lots of upsides of, of, about this situation if you are prepared to exploit the kind of slight loopholes. Yeah. Lovely. Well, I think there'll be a lot. There's sort of a lot of questions that we can go through um, afterwards and following up. Sam, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say yeah. the one thing we haven't mentioned about that is I know all, all three of our companies 
um, are doing a lot on the ground in terms of preparation. We're, we're all we're all specialist countries. So we're very connected with the country, so we know what they're doing on the ground in terms of making it safe and secure from a from a COVID point of view. Yeah. Um, and you know, God knows they don't have much else to be doing right now. Um, so they really, are, you know, the hotels are doing huge amounts of work. Um, and the and our partners on the ground, the transport people, all the rest of it, uh, making sure it's secure um, from a COVID point of view, not just for the guests, but also for locals, which is a which is a big concern. Um, so so there is there is a lot of work going on behind the scenes, um, and yep. you know this is this is what we do as companies essentially. So um, that just thought that's worth worth mentioning. Yep. Thank you. So I think we just sort of just before we do a few questions, it will just be nice if you guys tell us what you've been up to just the last eight months. Obviously, we're just used to talking about travel so much and that's been pulled away from us. So, um, Ginny, do you want to fire away and tell us? Um, well, um, <laughs> we've been you wouldn't you wouldn't know, but we have been doing quite a bit behind. Yeah, the scenes. Um, we have. Um, uh, invested in a whole new website um, which, which we'll be hoping to launch in the next couple of months so lots of that rather dull work around that yeah um, but something fun to get our teeth into um, we've also um, overhauled our, our sort of marketing system as well um, in terms of um, sort of support for 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 the countries that that we work in um we're quite i mean we're quite a small company so we're quite local so we have a a a a, a, a small school that we are we, we fund and we've been feeding all the kids there and also through um a, a lodge with which we're with which we're sort of a, a, a minor shareholder we have been um handing out food parcels in the local community oh, great. um so yeah i'm sure there are other things i've been doing but goodness knows <laughs> how, how this longest ever time has passed so quickly i don't know <laughs> i know sarah what about jla and, and your side yeah we've um oh, uh... Well, there was the, the sort of mad, mad um, uh, uh, sort of crisis of, of management of bringing everybody back. Um, I, I noticed one of the big concerns of being being trapped trapped o overseas. And um, you know, please report we didn't have anybody trapped. Um, we uh, we got everybody back um, by, by by the end of by the end of March. Um, some fairly heroic efforts and, and late nights and some sort of um, deft deft work with computer systems. But um, we, we we got everybody back, and uh, that that was. Uh, um, that was a sort of an adrenaline fueled few weeks, and and then obviously spend a lot of time unpicking bookings, and and in most cases moving people. Maybe people, some people move from earlier in the year to later in the year, and some people have moved again, uh, you know, onto next year. I think there's a great appetite for, for, for travel. A lot of people do do want to be able to get away when when it's possible to do so. We're also doing a new website. Um, hopefully launching it next week, but um, watch this space. Um, but I think, uh, you know, it's been a challenging time because uh, for all sorts of reasons, all sorts of really obvious reasons, but you know, uh, we've had a lot of staff on furlough, some people working, some on furlough, people who are working are doing so as, as I am for my kitchen, um, spare bedrooms, etc. cetera. And, um, uh, you know, I think people have missed each other and people have missed yeah. Latin America and being able to travel to Latin America, being able to talk about Latin America as often as they do. So one of the really nice things I think we did was, um, it was the company's 40th birthday this year. We, we haven't celebrated it in quite the way we had. We had a whole load of, load of activities planned, which all, all went by the wayside. But um, one of the things we did was we did a, a virtual uh, hike, bike, um, uh, hike, bike, you can do Zumba, uh, you know, any sort of physical movement to get ourselves from Mexico City down to Ushuaia. I think it's about 10,000 um, wow. yep. 10, kilometers. So, <laughs> and we planned to do it in 40 days. Um, we did it in 38 in the end. Yeah. Um, but what was nice about it was we, we, we had an app, um, so it meant that everyone could post pictures of where they'd been out for a bike ride that morning or, uh, you know, sort of what, what they'd been doing. And we could track our progress across Latin America so we could see where we got to, which was a nice opportunity to revisit some of our favorite destinations. Um, and it was a fundraising effort. So we raised a couple of thousand pounds for um, uh, specifically for COVID related sort of charities in, in Latin America. So it, again, it felt like a timely thing to do and a nice way of being able to give, give something back. Um, we generally, people who travel with us, they're, they're often the opportunity to, to, to make charitable donations to some of the charities we support. 
and that's you know we raise a lot of money every year and of course with people not traveling that's that you know that's another yeah. another implication um, yeah, yeah, yeah. of people not being able to get away so um so that was a nice way of everyone being able to keep in touch and um and raise some money into the bargain as well fantastic sam etg <laughs> yes i don't want to repeat what what sarah just said but i, I do think it's worth you know drawing attention to that point that Sarah made that there were no customers stuck in in destination so we're all members of ATO the Association of Independent Tour Operators and so far as I know and I'm pretty sure this is true that no none of the ATO companies had any clients stuck in country you know it's what we do we know how to operate tours and um, you know we we got everyone home and made sure everyone was all right we had people like lots of people did you know in quarantine in different countries and made sure they were looked after talked to every day and um, you know were, were were flown home as soon as as soon as they were able to so um yeah it's one benefit of uh, booking with a specialist tour operator <laughs> that we should get in there, get that in there. <laughs> was highlighted pretty comprehensively in that period um in, in of madness at the end of march and and, and april um and and also we had a lot of clients postponed and we will be forever grateful for those clients um who were able to do so um you know not everyone was able to but the clients who were um you know it's it's fantastic it gives them a chance something to look forward to and it, it really helps our suppliers in country um because they know they've got business in 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 the bag as it were for future and of course it helps us um and it helps us maintain maintain our team um in the uk I think the thing that we're sort of most excited about really coming out of the last six months is we've launched a whole new product range and um, we're calling Revitalize, um, which is a it's sort of simplified, um, you know, all of our tours are very immersive and um, you, you tend to move around a lot and, and see the country, um, but these are, these are more simple. Um, so it's, it's one or two stops. Um, but they're in hotels, really lovely hotels that really say something about the destination, you know, not places where you could be anywhere. They're really places where you, they say something about the destination and there's some interesting things to do. So you have still got that immersive feeling, but in a much more um, sort of relaxing way with, with that bit more of an emphasis on, um, on, on kind of wellness and, and, and revitalizing, which we probably all need to do some <laughs> of as, you know, as we come, as we come through that. So we're, we're very pleased with that. And, um, we also did a, um, a competition around that, um, which was nominate a hero where people were allowed to nominate someone that they've, anyone really that they felt had done, you know, some, something special or, or, you know, for them over, over the uh, period of the lockdown and um, you know kindly had some partners that, that donated the hotels and, and, and flights and, and a really fantastic um, I think um, she was a, a single mother who's a nurse um, yeah. I'm looking at Matt there yeah 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 they won it and it was watching the video of her winning she couldn't believe it and we, we can't wait for um, them to be allowed to take that trip actually so the video is uh, on our instagram if you want to watch it it's a very lovely moment when she finds out that she wins she's yeah. really in shock so it's quite nice it was a great moment for us wasn't it yeah it's really special so yeah that's that's i think that's really good great so let's just do a couple of questions because i know we've obviously gone over our 20 minutes <laughs> so um yeah this is a good one from kathy and um you know she said that travel companies and job losses have really been kept out of the media. So, you know, what, what, what are you guys, what are we all doing to keep afloat and you know, how, how's it looking? Shall I yeah. start with that? Yeah, I mean, I, we are 50% smaller than we were beforehand. Um, sadly, I, I do think, you know, I, I wouldn't usually quote my mother on, on this, but my mother keeps phoning me up and saying, why is travel, why are travel companies not in the news? You know, you're not allowed to operate. Um, and I can't answer that. We, I'm, you know, not a politician, but, um, you know, we, we haven't been able to operate. We've got no revenue. We've had no revenue since, since, since March. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, it, it is, it is, it is what it is, but, um, we, we have had to cut our cloth. Um, and, you know, I think there's, there's, big, big job losses just stacking up in the travel industry. And we're going to see lots more as, as furlough comes, comes to an end. Um, we'll once, 
once we're able to travel, I see there's there's big big demand. People will want to travel um, once once they can. I think it will come back. Um, but it's it's it is a matter of of, of sitting very tight and until then. And 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 in country, um, you know, you've seen. Yeah, it's it's very very difficult. They don't have the support in in third world countries, of course, that, that we have from uh, from governments and so on. Um, and 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 people are struggling. We've seen a good bit of domestic tourism picking up places like India, um, which is which is good in Vietnam. Um, so in countries where that has happened, that's been a, a little bit of a savior, but it, it it's it's in no way um, in no way enough. Um, and they can't you know they can't have travel coming back soon enough. Yep. Do you yeah, guys I, want to add anything? Yes, or? yes. I, I wanted to echo about the domestic um, tourism, which uh, has been an absolute lifeline uh, in, in particularly in, in Southern Africa. Uh, as soon as it was possible for, uh, well, once they came out of, uh, of level, uh, moved to, to level two lockdown um, and people were able to travel freely and, and, and travel all around South Africa. It's quite amazing. Though, of course, there's so much demand. There, as, as I think many people know, that there are great disparities of wealth in, in some parts of Africa and South Africa is probably the epitome of that. So the, has, uh, for, for all of those people who are wondering whether or not their lodges will still be around those who've postponed, um, we, 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 we think so tentatively, cautiously. We, we, we think actually it's been pretty good. Um, a lot of our, our suppliers are actually telling us about the, the level of reserves that they've got and that they, they reckon they can weather up, up to, you know, years yeah. of, 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 of depressed demand. So, um, that's been really great. Uh, but the other thing, we haven't had to lose too many staff um, in, in our South African office, partly because, sadly, in our local community, our travel company is probably the worst affected, which does mean that there are other opportunities. So, so we've been able to offer voluntary redundancy um, and, 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 and sort of shed a little less harshly than yeah. might have otherwise been the case because there are some other opportunities locally there but that doesn't go for our our, our our partner lodges and camps which are in some of uh, some of their areas there just is no other form of of employment and 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 no schools no clinics other than those that are supplied by the safari camp say yeah so um yeah we really need to keep them going Anything from your side, Sarah, or does that cover? Very similar experience. We're, yeah. we're, we're a smaller business. Um, we've made full use of the furlough scheme. Um, um, our staff have been with us for many, many, many years and built up huge amounts of knowledge and we're, we're determined to keep as many people together as we can. Um, and as, as Ginny and Sam both said, they've indicated, you know, this goes right through the supply chain. Um, you know, travel experiences are, are delivered by people broadly at, at, at every mm. sort of juncture. And, um, you know, right through to sort of, um, uh, you know, people that, that, that clean rooms, small guides. Um, Sam mentioned one of your guides who's, who's selling noodles at the moment. I mean, I think people are incredibly resourceful. Mm. It's great news that, that there is, uh, it sounds like in all of our destinations now, increasingly some domestic local tourism happening. Because I think, you know, that, that helps get some cash flowing through the system, which has, yeah. been, which has been sorely lacking. And um, it gives people, everyone, a, a little bit of hope for the future um so uh, so i think i, I think that's that, that's positive um uh so good to get a few things moving i think lovely thank you so a lot of the questions were destination specific so we're going to kind of keep them aside and we'll answer them afterwards but um barry asked what what's it like traveling long haul at present of which we might, we might not be able to answer because we haven't done it but you know, you my, guys... my husband's done it. Okay, um, yeah. So I'll, 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 I'll speak <laughs> on his behalf. Um, he said um, that uh, actually, it, it, in many ways, it was a slightly more comfortable experience mm -hmm. than 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 he would have anticipated. Um, it, the, you, depending on where you're going, you you know everybody on the plane has had a negative PCR yeah. test yeah. within the last what, whatever, because there are different, but let's say 72 hours is quite typical. Um, so that gives you a level of comfort. Everybody's wearing a mask. Yeah. The air is changed. What is it? Uh, uh, 
I, I might have got this wrong, but something like um, 40 times uh, an hour yeah. um, as, by comparison with about 10 times an hour in an office. So yeah. um, you've got the HEPA filters. You may well have fewer people on the planes. Um, you won't have all that stinky food, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the, you may regard the wearing of the mask as a big no. Um, and if you do, there's not much I can say about that. Yeah. But um, that accepted, it could be as pleasant a flying experience as we're likely to have for a while. Yeah. Um, airports, um, very organized, yeah. um, probably with the exception of um, our own dearly beloved Heathrow. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so um, temperature testing on arrival, all very organized. They have to be, I think. Yeah. If yeah, these yeah, destinations yeah. want us back, they have to really show that. Yeah. Great. Anything else to add? Or we... I haven't been long haul. I've only no. been short haul, and it, but, but it was great and it was fabulous to get away. Um, our, co our colleague, actually, she flew back home to um, New Zealand and we got live updates from her flights. She flew with Singapore Airlines and there was only about 50 people on the plane. And so she had a whole row to herself. She had really good food. So, yeah, there, there's definitely there is like Ginny says advantages. Sorry, Mad, I'm diving in here, but there is advantages for sure. Um, traveling. So I think we're going to leave it there and um, thank you everybody who came along and um, it was Matt, wonderful. How are, we going, to, sorry, how are we going to answer the destination ones? I've got the queue. I've got the questions um, okay. on the side and right. um, we're going to put them on the web page. Right. So I'll send them to you guys and you can individually answer them because we've okay. got some of the names, um, but we'll put them on this web page. So you'll have them all there because um, we have got a lot of questions, which is really great. So um, yeah, thank you so much. And it's really lovely that we can get together um, and do this. It's probably not something we would have done a year ago. So silver lining and all that. Um, looking for them all the time at the moment. Um, so I'll say bye from me. And yeah, yeah. thank you so thanks. much. Bye. Thank you for bye. coming. Bye. All right. Bye, bye guys. See ya. <laughs>